Well, good morning, beloved. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And I am the Reverend Dr. Betty J. Tom, and I am the pastor and servant leader of this awesome congregation, Old First Presbyterian Church. We are located in downtown Newark, New Jersey, and we welcome you to worship again today. We're so glad that you came back to be with us, the Old First Presbyterian Church congregation, friends, supporters, followers, as we continue to worship our Lord and Savior today. Today is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all of our dads and to all of our men of our church. We salute you today. We thank God for you and we pray that you will enjoy this day and that you will receive all of the accolades and honors that you so deserve. Happy Father's Day, dads. And again, we want to say a shout out to Mr. Kevin Harris. Hello, Kevin, and God bless you. And thank you for that beautiful prelude that opened up our worship service this morning. As always, Kevin, you're right on point. God bless you and thank you. Well, I want to invite you to uh, follow along with me and to listen as I read our call to worship today, which can be found in Psalm 145, verses 1 through 3. Come now, here is the call to worship. I will exalt you, my God and my King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise your name, and I will extol you forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Your greatness is unfathomable. Psalm 145, 1 through 3. Praise ye the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. I want to invite you now to join me as we say a word of prayer and go before the Lord as we open up this service. Let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we come again. We have gathered your people, your church, your body of Christ from every corner. We've come together in this virtual space to worship you, to magnify you, to sing your songs, to say your name, and Lord, to hear your word. We pray that the Holy Spirit will meet us here. We cannot be face to face, but we can be together in one spirit in this virtual space. Bless us today, Lord. We need you. We can do nothing without you. Bless this service and bless us as we come together one more time. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And all the people said, Amen and Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's take a moment to pass the peace with one another. And if you're there alone and there's no one in your house but you, then you can pass the peace with me. Our words are, the peace of Christ be with you. And the response is, and also with you. So let's take a moment to pass the peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Amen. Praise God. I'm excited about this worship service today. As always, there is a timely, wonderful, relevant word from the Lord today. And we're anxious to, to share God's word with you today uh, in the message, Say His Name. But before we do that, we want to just thank God again for the return of our one of our praise and worship leaders, Mrs. Mary O. Johnson, will come and she will bless you with a song, a selection. So Get your, get yourself situated, get your Bibles, get ready for the songs and the, the reading of the scripture. Mrs. Cassandra Harris will come back and she will read that scripture with passion and fervor. It's, the text today is found in Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. The name of my sermon is Say His Name. Amen. And then Mr. Andrew Darling. Andrew will come and he will bless our socks off as he sings that sermonic solo and gets us ready for the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so get ready, get ready, get ready for our service today. Marielle, Cassandra, and Andrew. God bless you. Thank you. 
Today's scripture reading is taken from Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20, New International Version. Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. God bless the reading of his holy word. Happy Sunday morning. Oh, my, 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 my. Simple song. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness. Holiness is what you want for me, for me. Help me sing holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want for me, for me. Righteousness, righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want for me, hey, for me. So take my heart and mold it, take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. Brokenness, brokenness is what I long for. Brokenness is what I need. Brokenness, brokenness is what you want for me. For me. Hey, take my heart and mold it. Take my mind, oh Lord, transform it. Take my will, conform it to 
yours, yes, to yours, oh Lord, Ooh, take my Conform it to your, to your, oh Lord, take my heart and mold, take my mind, take my mind, transform it, take my Conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord, to yours. Up, oh, my, 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 yours, to yours, to yours, to yours, oh Lord, to yours. Holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. From me. For me, mm, yeah, brokenness, brokenness is what you want. For me, well, we welcome you back and thank God for Marielle and for Andrew and for Cassandra for the songs and for the reading of the scriptures today. God bless you. Would you join me now as we go before the Lord in a word of prayer as we prepare for the preaching of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, again we give you thanks and praise for what our ears have heard, what our hearts have received. And now, Lord, prepare our hearts to hear the preaching of the gospel that we may grow thereby. Lord, let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart, let it be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we say amen. 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 My sermon title is Say His Name. Say His Name. There is a movement going on called the No Name, No Photo, No Notoriety Movement. And it was started in order to extinguish the quest for notoriety and infamy to those, who, to those individuals who commit mass murders and violent copycat crimes. Law enforcement officials believe that if the media and the public will refuse to say the names, will refuse to show the pictures, we will deprive these criminals of the notoriety that their actions require and that they so long for. Violent like-minded individuals will be deprived of any media celebrity or any media spotlight so that they will not have their names in the news. One Oregon Sheriff deputy says it like this. He said, forget the zero, which is the killer. They deserve no news coverage. But remember the hero. Think about the victim and the families that were left behind. Don't say his name. The deputy went even further and asked the news organizations to change their practices 
and forego any attention to the killers. Let us make a pledge to never, ever say their names. Well, traditionally, remembering to say a person's name is a sign of respect and honor. But in the case of these mass murderers, not saying their names is a sign of our disgust and our dishonor. It's important that people call us by our family name, our God-given names, right? And not call us out of our name. But what is more important is that, that knowing, not just knowing our names, but knowing us as individuals. The same is true in this timely text today found in three of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And it is crystal clear in the Gospel of Matthew's version that some people simply knew about Jesus. So what's happening in this text today? Jesus knew that his time was short. He was on his way to Jerusalem and to suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the scribes, and the chief priest. In, or, in other words, the religious orthodoxy of his day. He would be killed, but he said on the third day that he would rise again from the dead. And so Jesus enters into this safe region, this safe zone. Caesarea Philippi. It's about 25 north miles north of the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus took the time to ask his disciples what the people were saying about him. There were so many people following Jesus. Our Savior had crowds of people who came out to hear him preach and teach and to perform miracles. But was there anyone in the crowd or even among Jesus' own disciples who really understood who Jesus was? Was there anyone who recognized Jesus for who he really was? So in this beautiful city, the bastion of ancient gods, Caesarea Philippi, a place full of pagan Greek idols and Baal worshipers and, uh, and Cyrenian temples. Jesus asked this life-altering question of his disciples then and of us now today. I believe that Jesus purposely chose this place because he wanted his majestic and kingly identity to be known in a place where the people worshipped idols. Amen. Remember back in February of 2007 when President, um, when President Obama chose to announce his candidacy for the President of the United States on the steps of the old uh, uh, state capitol building in Chicago, Illinois? It is the very place where Abraham Lincoln delivered his A House Divided speech some 149 years before. Make no mistake about it. People choose places for rallies and major announcements for a reason. The place holds significant for that particular event or to honor or to dishonor. You understand what I'm saying? The first question that Jesus asked had to do with what the world was saying about him. Who do the people say that I, the Son of Man, am? Jesus identified with himself with our humanity by calling himself the Son of Man. The people were saying that Jesus was just a string of prophets. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Now don't miss this point. It was an honor to be associated with John the Baptist, his cousin, the forerunner of Jesus. It was an honor to be in the same category as Elijah or Jeremiah, of whom the Jews believe would come back again before the Messiah arrived. Jesus was in good company, so they thought. Even King Herod thought that Jesus was John the Baptist who'd come back to get him from the dead. And Matt, you remember in Mark chapter 6, King Herod had heard about Jesus. His name had become so popular and well known. 
And some were saying uh, that Jesus was John the Baptist who was raised from the dead and, and that's why he was doing the miracles that he could do. And others said that Jesus was Elijah. And still others claimed, oh, he's just a prophet, like one of the prophets of old of long ago. But when Herod heard about what Jesus was doing, he said, oh, no, he's John, the one whom I beheaded. He has risen from the dead. Even Herod knew of Jesus, but he did not know Jesus. And so we fast forward to June 21st, 2020. What does the world today say about who Jesus is? Well, the Barnard Research Group published a report in 2015 of the top five things that people believe about Jesus. And while most people believe that Jesus was and is a real person, many struggle with whether Jesus is God or if Jesus was sinless or if Jesus was simply a good historical religious figure, or if Jesus is really the way to heaven. As you can see, not so much has changed in these thousands of years since Jesus walked the earth. Some people simply know about Jesus. But it's not enough to simply know about Jesus. We must know Jesus through our personal discovery and our personal experience. Amen? I like the way that Jesus started this second question. Jesus said, but. That three-letter word, but. That three-letter word, but, is a conjunction that indicates that the next clause will contradict the previous one. You know, I love you, but. Your necktie is nice, but. I forgive you, but in essence, Jesus was saying to his disciples, I hear what you're saying about what the people are saying about me, that I'm like John the Baptist or Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets, but I'm not any of those people. Whom do you, plural, whom do you say that I am? What is your experience with me? What do you say to your family and friends about me? Who am I to you? Now, Jesus was speaking to all of the disciples, but you know, type A personality, Peter jumped right up and made this confession. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, the Messiah, the anointed one. Bravo, Peter, bravo. Happy face, clapping hands, thumbs up emojis, Peter. You nailed it. But least we give Peter too much credit. The scripture says that Peter was divinely inspired by God to give this revelation. Peter knew that of all the names to identify Jesus, none of them really cut the mustard. Peter knew that Jesus had power. He had abilities, and his teachings were like no one that had come before him. Out of Peter's mouth came the name that defines the true identity of Jesus. Thou art the Messiah, the anointed one of God. Can I share a nugget of truth with you? Lean in close. I want you to hear this. I want you to get this. I want to share a nugget of truth with you. Listen. You can be born on the pew. You can grow up in children's church. You can go to Overway Stay a Night Summer Youth Camp. You can sing on the choir. You can be an elder, a deacon, a trustee, or the preacher. You can pay all your tithes and offerings. Uh-huh. You can help out in the feeding program. You can visit the sick and visit those in prison. And you can still not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. That's right. You can do all of those good things and not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Some people have a learned behavior relationship with Jesus and with the church. 
They learned how to sing the songs and they learned how to pray the prayers and dress the dress and talk the talk. But they have a form of godliness that defies and denies the life transforming power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They know church. They just don't know the head of the church, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. I was really interested in the testimony of Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow, I don't know if he still is, but he was a baseball player with the New York Mets, but he was formerly a quarterback with with the National Football League and a broadcaster. He has been so public and open about his relationship with Jesus Christ. So in an interview with the Christian Broadcasting Network in 2010, Tim Tebow shared how he came to know Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. Here's his testimony. He said he began to ask questions of his mother and father. He wanted to trust Christ in his life. And he was thinking, you know, if I get in a car wreck tomorrow and I die, I don't think I'm going to go to heaven. So he said he was scared. He was scared to go to bed that night. So he went to bed that night. And the next morning when he woke up, he grabbed his mother and they kneeled by the sofa, by the sofa on the floor. And he said, mom, I want to ask Jesus to come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, and make me a child of God. And from that instant, Tim said, I knew that I went from darkness to light. He said he, get this, get this, he said he was six years old when he made his confession of faith. Six. Praise God. What's your story? When and how did you come to know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Where were you when you asked Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins and to make you a child of God? Who is Christ to you? It's not enough. Listen, it's not enough to simply know of Jesus. We must know Jesus by personal discovery and personal experience. So say his name, say his name, his precious name. Listen, as I close, although Peter came to recognize who Jesus was, Peter was still had no clue about Christ's mission and neither did the 11, the other 11 disciples. They still thought that the Messiah was their warrior conquering Messiah who would come and overthrow the Roman regime. Further down in this chapter 16, when Jesus started talking about going to Jerusalem and, 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 and having to, to die in Jerusalem and, and being raised again on the third day, impulsive Peter grabbed a hold of Jesus' arm and again was the first to speak up and say, Not so, Lord, this must never happen to you. And Jesus who just five minutes earlier had given Peter the keys to the kingdom, called Peter Satan, called Peter his adversary, and told Peter to get behind him. Here's the text again. Jesus went on to say, I tell you that you are Peter, you are Petro, a little rock. And upon this rock, Petra, Upon your confession of faith in me, the rock of salvation, I will build my church. I will build the ecclesia, not a building. Get this. Jesus wasn't talking about building a building. He wasn't talking about a denomination. He wasn't talking about Baptists and Pentecostals and Presbyterians and Catholics. Jesus was talking about a community of believers, a community of faith. He said, I will build a community of faith and the very gates of Haiti will not be able to prevail against it. And I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth is bound and whatever you loose on earth is loosed. And then he ordered his disciples to not tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Now I must disagree with my Catholic brothers and sisters concerning the apostolic succession. Jesus was not making Peter the head of the church and the first pope. Jesus was saying to Peter, Peter, you are Petro. You are a stone. And I'm going to build my church, 
my church, the ecclesia, the ones called out of darkness into the marvelous light. I'm going to build on a rock, a Petra. And Peter, you will be one of the foundational stones that will help bring the living stones of the Jews and the Gentiles to faith in me. Peter, you and all of Jesus' followers will be given the keys to the kingdom. You know, keys signify access. When you have keys, you, you have the ability to get into things and to access. You have authority to loose and it's loosed and you have authority to bind and it's bound. Hallelujah. The devil, listen, listen to me. The devil does not have authority over the life of a believer, period, period. If you're a believer and you've been bought with the precious blood of Jesus, you need to tell Satan to take a look at your backside. And the very gates of hell will never prevail, ever prevail against the church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't care what it looks like. Jesus has made us the promise and the very gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Can you say amen? Amen. And I believe one of those keys to the kingdom is the powerful, powerful name of Jesus. Listen, we get to use the name of Jesus. The scripture says, because at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the father. So say the name, say his name. Amen. Use that powerful name of Jesus, 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 the healer, Jesus, the deliverer, Jesus, the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley, Jesus, the bright and morning star, Jesus, the way maker and the burden bearer, Jesus, the friend that sticks closer than any brother, Jesus, 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 say his name. There's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Great God from Zion. I've been watching these protests going on in our country and even all over the world, in France and Germany and all over the world, people are protesting. And although many people, most of these people, they didn't even know these African-American victims who have been killed and brutalized by police action and their murders. Uh, they don't even know them, but, but, they, but they've been saying the victims' names. They've been writing the victims' names on placards and posters and, and cardboard and holding the victims' names up in the street. Victims like Michael Brown, age 18. Philando Castile, age 32. Alton Sterling, age 37. Tamir Rice, age 12. Freddie Gray, age 25. Eric Garner, age 43. Botham John, age 26. Stephen Clark, age 22. Brianna Taylor, age 26. George Floyd, age 46. And Rayshard Brooks, age 27. We say their names, we honor their memory and their lives because black lives matter. Amen. Amen. This movement, this movement, this no name, no photo, no notoriety movement begs us to never, ever say the name of these mass killers. Killers such as that young white male racist who killed nine parishioners, including the pastor at the historic Mother Emanuel AME Church in, in Charleston, South Carolina. We're not say your name. We're not going to say your name. The gunman at Fort Hood who killed uh, three people in 2014. We will not say your name. The Navy Yard killer who murdered a dozen people uh, back in 2013. We won't say your name. And the name of that psychopathic young man who killed 20 children in Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut back in 2012. We will not say your name. Let their name be forever lost. But there is a name. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its words. 
It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Say the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing. There's deliverance. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. Say his name when you're happy. Say his name when you're sad. Say his name when you're full of joy. Say his name when you're discouraged. Just say his name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And amen. Well, brothers and sisters, wow. I love to say the name. It's just something about the name of Jesus. I love to call that name. Perhaps you're with us watching this uh, vi uh, virtual service today and you was like, what is all the excitement about? Let me tell you, if you have never, you may, you may know of Jesus, but if you don't know Jesus, you need to take a moment and I'm extending you the invitation to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If there's never been a time in your life that you did like Tim Tebow, that you bowed down on your knees and you asked Jesus Christ to come into your life and to, and, to, and to be your Lord and Savior, forgive you of your sins and to make you a child of God, then now is the time. Today is a day of salvation. Harden not your hearts. Now is the time of salvation. Let me pray with you and pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, if there is someone who is tuned into this service today and they may know of you, but they don't know you as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They heard the songs. They they even may have read some scriptures, but they don't know you from experience. Lord, I pray right now that as they pray with me, that Lord, that you will receive them as you promised in your word. They simply say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe that you are Jesus Christ, that you are Lord. Forgive me of my sins and help me, Lord, to serve you and to walk in your ways. I believe in my heart that you are Lord and I speak it out of my mouth and you said I'm saved. Amen. Praise God. And I believe God heard that prayer in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, beloved, let us say the Lord's prayer together. As we say this time of prayer, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let us prepare now. I have four short and brief announcements for you, and then we will be led in the benediction. God bless you. Let's prepare for announcements. Amen. Beloved, our announcements are as follows. You should have received a congregational letter from me this past week. Uh, sort of detailing the things, the current events that are happening in our church and among our congregation, and also sharing some of the reopening plans that have been lifted up by the city of Newark and also by Governor Murphy for the state of New Jersey. And so if you did not receive a copy of that letter, please call the church office and let Reverend Marsha Sapsalter know and we hope that the information that we have shared will be uh, in, um, beneficial to you. On this afternoon at 4.30, from 4.30 to 5.30, we will be in prayer. Uh, Elder uh, Bessie Lee Watts will be our prayer facilitator on our prayer call this afternoon as always. The number for that call in prayer time is 1-564-888-5493. The access code is 527-822. We invite you to join us to be in prayer this afternoon from 4.30 to 5.30. We will continue in Bible study on this Tuesday. We are actually finishing up the, the uh, book of Romans, Paul's letter to the Romans. 
Um, uh, Reverend Wilkes will be faci uh, facilitating the Bible study and he will be finishing up with chapters 15 and 16. You should have received the Bible study questions on last week. This is a Zoom Bible study and it's by invitation only. So if you have not received an invitation to this Bible study but would like to be a part of our Bible study, please reach out to the church office or to me personally and I will see that you get invited to the Bible study. Keep in mind that we are continuing Bible study in the month of July and again our own Elder Bessie Lee Watts will be our Bible teacher and facilitator for the July Bible study. And she will be teaching on the parables of Jesus. You don't want to miss this. This is going to be exciting. So plan now to continue in Bible study with us during the month of July as we study the parables of Jesus. Again, I want to thank all of you who are continuing to send in your tithes and gifts and offerings to the church. We are receiving your offerings and we thank God for you. We thank God that you are continuing to um, bless our church so that we can also be a blessing to you, that we can go forward with our mission and our ministry of the Old First Presbyterian Church. So God bless you and may God return to you 30, 60, and 100 fold as you have been giving to the Lord. That concludes our announcements today and we thank God for you. Let us prepare now as we prepare for our benediction. Jesus has many names. Jesus, Emmanuel, Christ, Lord, the Lamb of God, King of the Jews, King of all kings, Rabbi, the Word, the Son of God, the Son of Man. But whatever you call him, say his name and say it often. Call on the name of the Lord. God has promised us that God is just as close to us as his name. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, both now and forever. Amen and amen. Praise God. If you have enjoyed these services, please like us on our social out outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And we invite you to subscribe to our Facebook page and to our YouTube page so that you can continue to worship with us. So God bless you. Have an awesome, awesome week. And we'll see you back here again on next Sunday. God bless you. Kevin, the postlude.